A press release sent to the Malaysian media in the wee hours of the morning on March the 22nd, 2016 came as a surprise to many East Malaysians. It read, the Gazette extinguishing the native rights of ownership for the land earmarked for the dam site and its reservoir has been officially revoked. In other words, the Sarawak state government made a U-turn in the Baram Dam project and is recognising the indigenous rights of Baram people to their ancestral lands. The five-year-long struggle of these people against the dam has finally come to a fruitful end. For the first time, they are seeing concrete proof that the project won't be happening. Or will it? Don't kill us! Don't kill us! Don't kill us! Don't kill us! Don't kill the riot! As the biggest state in the country, Sarawak is blessed with vast swaths of forest, great rivers, and a relatively low population density. As far back as the 70s, the state has been identified to have a great potential for hydroelectric power, or HEP generation, because of its abundance of water resources with an annual precipitation of about 4,000 millimetres. The first HEP project in Sarawak, the Batang Ai Dam, was built in 1982. This was followed by the construction of the Bakun Dam in 1996, the first mega dam in Sarawak. With a total surface area of 695 square kilometers, it is almost as big as Singapore. Bakun stands as the biggest mega dam in Southeast Asia and the biggest in Asia outside China. In 2008, the construction of the Murum Dam began. The very same year, the federal and the state government introduced the Sarawak Corridor of Renewable Energy, or SCORE project. Under this project, 52 sites were identified for dam projects estimated to be completed by the year 2030. But this development has come under heavy criticism. Bruno Mansa Fonds, a Swiss fund dedicated to the conservation of rainforests and the indigenous people of Sarawak, was among the first to criticize that the main purpose of SCORE is not to put Sarawak on a power grid, but to turn this state of greenery into a land of heavy industry. BMF reports also reveal that SCORE aims to deforest massive areas of Sarawak and potentially dislocate up to hundreds of thousands of indigenous people for the construction of mega dams. generating massive amounts of power to feed heavy polluting industries such as oil refineries, aluminum and steel manufacturing, livestock as well as coal power plant industries so that Sarawak becomes a developed state by the year 2030. Questions were also raised when the Sarawak Energy Commission annual report showed that all 50 dams will provide a total capacity of 20,000 megawatts by 2030. All these numbers may be difficult to crunch and digest, but the suffering of the relocated indigenous people of the two completed mega dam projects, Bakun and Murum, are real. Kehidupan kami sekarang kami susah sari. Di tempat kami lama ada senang, tapi di sini sekarang susah sari. Bagi yang tidak mampu tu mereka terpenjara di sini lah. After Bakun and Murum, the attention then shifted to Baram, a 1,200-megawatt dam approximately 250 kilometers inland from Miri, the next scheduled mega dam for construction. Since 2012, the state government has conducted a social and environmental impact assessment as a part of the first step before construction. However, this time, they were met with the strongest resistance they have ever seen. We want to protect our forest, we want to protect our land! Save our people! Save our people! Save our people! No more mega dam! This is our message! Tell all the people inside there! February 2016. 
exactly four weeks before the revocation of the Baram Dam Gazette, Kini TV reporter Adzim Amir and camera person QC Cheng embarked on a journey into the interior areas of Sarawak to see for themselves the extent of the impact that the mega dam projects of Bakun, Murum and Baram have had on the indigenous people. Their journey of nearly two weeks started with them travelling from Miri deep into Ulu Baram, visiting the dam site of the tentative Baram projects and stopping by some of the villages that would be affected by the projects, including Tanjung de Palit, Long San, Long Lama and Na'a. When our journalists spoke to the villagers of what they think of the dam, their response is almost unanimous. Sekiranya Baram Dam ini dibina, di mana ke kami akan hidup, di mana ke kami akan pergi, harta kami hilang, hidup kami bukan lagi orang asar, kami menjadi orang setinggal. Biarlah saya orang minta itu ketua menteri ataupun perdana menteri bom seorang dulu. Saya tidak mau lari dari sini. Biar saya mati tergelam. Memang langsung tidak mau lari. Hutan ini yang macam supermarket kami orang lah. Bila kami orang mau pergi cari sayur, cari binatang. Dalam supermarket kami orang tu, kalau tidak ada babi, ada lah payau, ada lah hijang, ada lah kerak, munyet. Itulah yang kami orang dapat dari supermarket kami orang. The Ulu Baram area is the native homeland of the Orang Ulu an umbrella term that covers the minority natives of Penan, Kenya, Kayan, Saban, Kalabit and Punan. They are mainly consisting of farmers and hunter-gatherers who rely on the forest resources as their main source for food. When the Baram people learned that their homeland is the latest target of a new dam site in 2008, a shadow loomed over their villages. To Peter Kalang, a native Orang Ulu engineer, this was a sign of an impending disaster. A lot of people who heard about it were not happy about the dam because they have seen what happened in the dams that they built earlier. That is mainly in Batangai and in Bakun. Peter Kalang has been at the forefront of the Save River Coalition in opposing the construction of the dam. I did a campaign, a signature campaign, uh, to ask the government not to build a dam. There was product efforts in protest, there were no, not enough coordination. So because of that, a group of uh, people came together, including me. We formed a network which called, we call Safe Rivers. Safe Rivers is a coalition of NGO and individuals who want to fight against the proposed dam. They request the government to look for alternative ways in order to bring development to Sarawak. We have seen the proof from the dams that they have built. First dam, Batang Air, was completed in 1986. So now it's 2016. But the people there, their livelihood is no better than ever was. In fact, to a lot of extent, it is worse. But now the government give them, like in the case of this Bakun Dam, they only give them three acres. Since its establishment in 2011, Save River has proven to be a headache for Sarawak Energy Berhad, the main government-linked company tasked with the construction of mega dams under the SCORE project. Save Rivers has protested numerous times on international events where Sarawak Energy Berhad was present. They work closely with international NGOs that are against mega dam projects and have even extended their movement to Tasmania in Australia, where Tasmania Hydro was a consulting partner for the project. Saya dengan uh, saudara saya Peter Kalang dari uh, Chairman Safe Rivers, kami telah pergi ke Australia meminta uh, pertolongan daripada senator ataupun MP minta balik semua pekerja-pekerja mahir seperti engineer keluar daripada Sarawak. Pada masa kami berkempen di sana, mereka juga turun padang untuk membuat demonstration supaya pekerja-pekerja dari Tasmania ini keluar. 
To add to that, the local Baram people had also built two blockades on the road, preventing the construction team from SEB from entering the proposed site. Mula-mulanya kami tinggal di bawah kemah plastik saja selama satu tahun lebih. Ini satu perjuangan yang begitu bersemangat sekali karena kami rakyat Baram yang turun padang pada masa itu lebih 100 orang. Semasa kami membuat operasi itu, memang kami tidak terfikir juga tentang apa resiko yang boleh dihadapi. Kami tidak fikirkan ketakutan itu ditangkap oleh pihak siapapun. Kami tidak memikir tentang itulah. Kami orang mati-mati tidak mau rumbing dengan orang. Panggil orang polis itu datang untuk uh, menakutkan kami, tapi kami pun tidak takut karena kami menjagakan hak kami. Uh, menurut apa yang saya lihat, kalau tidak ada bloket itu, tentu dem itu sudah uh, dibina sudah. Oleh karena ada orang yang berjuang untuk mempertahankan hak, maka pembinaan dem itu telah dihentikan sementara. The Baram people are adamant about defending their ancestral land because it is about their native rights, their culture, and their ancestors. Kubur, nenek kami orang, bapak kami orang ini. Apa macam mau ambil dia orang itu? Maka kita mau kasih dia orang masuk dalam air. Itu lagi lebih-lebih susah pikir pasal itu. Itu sebab tidak mau. Jangan dikira lah sedih ya macam kita nak gadi bakun ya di nak ya nang ah nang ada rasa sedih lah bukannya sedih sedikit dia ketara ada sedih ya terutama lah untuk tenggelam mula aku sedih pendam bapa aku yang bukannya ada diganti ya punya aku dapat gali nyambik tulangnya balik lagi juga bukan juga kami itu sih mau kerajaan lah kami itu nang berpegang dengan kerajaan tapi itu masalah dem tu si ngamba. The treatment that the Bakun and Murung people received also set a dark precedent for the people of Baram. Pasan itu Murun itu pasan itu diam sana Bakun sana di orang sana memang teruk orang sana cerita sampai orang nangis kamu di Baram jangan sekali lagi mau itu barang dia masuk di Baram kami orang sini tiap malam kami orang nangis. Saya telah melawat Uma Daro di pasan Asap. Jadi ini sebuah kampung yang terjejas oleh impangan bakun. Semua wakil daripada kampung yang terjejas oleh impangan itu mengadakan satu mesyuarat. Apa ketindakan mereka harus ambil meminta kerajaan negeri Sarawak untuk membayar pepasan ganti rugi yang mereka belum lagi selesai, hampir 15 tahun. Jikalau ini yang akan berlaku kepada pihak kami di Baram, masalah yang sama juga kami akan alami. To understand the extent of dissatisfaction among the relocated for the Bakun and Murum Dam, our reporters left Ulu Baram and travelled further south to Tegulang and Sungai Asa. When our crew arrived at Tegulang, one of the two resettlement areas of the Murum Dam, the stories that we heard were not happy ones. Mana ada senang di sini. Kenapa orang dia? Kenapa sini tidak senang? Mana ada senang? Cari barang makanan pun tidak senang. Kerja ladang pun tidak senang di sini. So, kerajaan tak kata pakai duit? Mana ada dia bagi. Saya tak ada kerja. Rancu tak ada kerja. Sekarang kamu tengok, orang di rumah tak ada. Semua pergi cari makanan tepat rumah lama punya. So, so sekarang uh, pergi hutan sangat jauh. Jauh. Kalau tak ada motor, tak ada kereta, susah nyap. Susah pergi jalan pergi umpangan murum. Binatang-binatang yang kami biasa makan susah nak cari dia. Diam di rumah saja, bilik di bilik saya. Macam orang gila saja duduk di Bilik. Susah lah sebab kita orang pun tak dapat kerja apa-apa pun daripada yang lain macam kumpul ni. Kita tinggal uh, sekarang ni macam orang yang siapa lah saya pun tak tahu. Tak ada kerja apa-apa. Ada 
rasa marah. Ada juga rasa marah tapi masa mana mau marah? Sebab kita merasakan hidup di masa di Lomalim lama dan uh, sekarang ini jauh berbeza. Orang cakap seperti karan ni peri, tanah peri, sekolah ada, klinik ada, ada. Tapi dua tahun sudah kami <coughs> di tempat yang orang pindah ini. Tengok keadaan jalan, atap rumah baru yang orang bikin ini sudah terbuka, terbang. Orang datang bikin pun tiada. ada. Bagaimana cara boleh ubah hidup yang seperti ini? Setiap kamu orang yang datang harus tolong membantu. These villagers complained that the area of relocation is too far away from the forest where they could forage for food. They claimed that the government had promised them 14 acres of land per family. That promise never came true even though they had moved there for a few years now. On top of that, the native people suddenly realized that they have to get used to the idea of currency and how it works. Sebelum kami pindah, ada janji. Api pri, rumah pri, air pri, tapi sekarang minta bayar. Api diminta bayar. Tahun 2014, sampai sekarang. The Murum Dam was the first mega dam constructed after the announcement of the SCORE project. But the idea of building the dam was conceived back in the 90s. The dam site is located on the Murum River, which is the uppermost part of the Rajang River Basin. The information on the Sarawak Energy webpage indicates that a total of seven communities in the Danum, Pilaran and Sepik villages were affected. Some of the Penan and Kenya population had mounted blockades to stop the construction work, but that did little to stop the project from raging on. In the case of the Bakun Dam, the construction itself was also entangled with controversy. The history of the dam can be traced back as far as the 1960s, but the realization of the project only came true in 1996 under former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. It was then halted shortly afterwards in the same year because of the 1997 Asian financial crisis. The project was then revived and construction resumed in 2000. Construction costs also ballooned to 7.2 billion ringgit in 2008. Despite multiple protests and petitions, more than 9,000 Kenyan and Kenya people were eventually forced to relocate to Sungai Asap, approximately 60 kilometers away from their ancestral land. When our reporters traveled to Sungai Asap, their stories were similar. Masalah di sini, kalau kamu nak pergi ke hutan, tiada hutan yang dekat sini dan tiada sungai yang cukup besar untuk kamu mencari ikan. Terpaksa pergi ke Bakun lah. Lebih kurang satu jam setengah perjalanan. Jadi kalau kamu nak pergi ke sana, pertama kamu mesti ada kereta. Kedua, kamu mesti ada perahu. Ketiga, mesti ada outboard engine. Keempat, kamu mesti beli minyak. The project was dead. Dia punya apa nama, pembesar-pembesar cakap, ah, inilah pilihan terbaik dengan kita untuk kita kita dipindahkan di tempat baru kerajaan menjanjikan ini ini dengan kita orang kampung ni sangat percaya dengan pemimpin jadi apa yang mereka putuskan mereka ikutlah looking back at the fate of the native people affected by the bakun and murum dams we see a stark contrast when it comes to the baram villages there is an increased level of awareness there is that uh, uh, not in terms of only the level of uh, an individual, but uh, getting in terms of the number of people getting more involved, uh, getting um, uh, information. You know? uh, one thing I think uh, because the extent of information, sharing of information is also very is uh, much better than those days. Thirdly, of course, uh, being able to also move around in terms of communication among the people. If you look at the community level, you know, now they also feel the need to, 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 to participate and to be able to be involved in decision making that, on matters that affect them. For Bakun, there were a lot of protests, but the people themselves were scared. You know, to, they were scared that they were being arrested, they were scared that they get fines and all that. Make a lot of police report, which they never did before. They come in and make police report and they go to the lawyer, ask the lawyer to sue him and all that. So this is something that uh, is something new. Lah. 
they go to the oldest Katro Masrakat, you know, the uh, village head and the uh, community head. They protest in front of the house there. So the Katro Masrakat are becoming more weary, offending the people now. Because the Katro Masrakat try to get the government to arrest us. So their people are not happy and they go and protest. For Murum Dam, they had the blockade. Only when the dam was already built, it's almost about 50% built and then they start. But for Baram, they start to protest and do the blockade when they did the geological study. Government has not spent so much money on Baram yet. Whereas in Bakun, they have bought the cement, they have brought in the contractor and everything. For the native people, they slowly learn that any decision making when it comes to development should not be a top-down process. Local people must be consulted and they have the right to be involved and make decisions too. Question back, right? Why, they, why the government never respect our rights to our land? Why the government never respect our rights to the resources that our people have been living, uh, depending upon for many generations? Because these are the very things that we need in life. So to them, uh, it, it itself is a kind of uh, security. The government is trying to give as little information as possible. They don't follow the international standard. If you look at the international standard, the international standard, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of the Indigenous People, UN Greek, they call it, Malaysia signed that. That require what we call the FP, the free, prior and informed consent. Information should be given freely to the people affected. Not only information is freely given, but the people must be consulted. We want somebody to sit in the panel, you know, not just the people from the village, but we want the people, uh, a lawyer, economist, and all these people employed by the village people to be part of the decision making. They should have full consultation in the village and bring this up to the government. Back in Tegulang and Sungai Asap, the sense of disappointment, frustration and helplessness is permeating through the communities. They don't believe much can be done to help them out of their dilemma, not even through politics. Kerajaan pun saya tidak undi, membangkang pun saya tidak undi. Bapak saya dulu pernah ikut dorang PKR. Sampai sekarang bapak saya sudah meninggal. Apa yang PKR buat bagi mereka. Sama juga kerajaan pun macam itu. PKR pun macam itu. Sama sekali, tidak ada beja. Biarlah saya duduk tengah-tengah. Undi pun sama ya untuk apa kita mengundi kerajaan. Kita undi pun tak tahu lepas kita undi makin lagi di bawah lagi kita. Pembangkang pun tidak mau. Tapi pembangkang mau. But for the people at Baram, things are apparently very different. Saya tidak mau itu kerjaan pun, tidak mau. Banyak duit pun dia. Mana ada dia tolong seorang. Dia orang bilang, ah, mau buat jeraya dengan kamu orang. Berapa tahun juga saya coba tua, belum juga ada itu. Saya merayu kepada kawan-kawan lain, saudara-saudara yang di Baram ini, especially orang yang menyokong Parti Barisan Nasional itu, sedarlah diri. Kalau Parti Barisan itu akan mencabut hak, akan memindahkan kita, membuat kita sebagai orang pelarian di, di, di negeri kita sendiri. Saya harap politik kita ini kali kasir bah ini biar. Our journalists also interviewed Dennis Ngau, Adun of Telang Usang, on the frustration of the people towards the dam project. And I must admit, from the government's point of view, the government side, kita agak uh, lam, uh, lam, lam, lambat, lam, lebab, lebab dari segi mengeluarkan info yang tepat. But for NGO yang so-called environmentalist, they will not like this thing. They want the nature to be kept as it is. Doesn't matter what happened to the rakyat, you can live as you are 100 years ago, it doesn't matter, you, as long as you don't cut the trees. This is what some of these NGOs is doing. Of course, on the opposition side, whatever the government do, when they bring positive change to the rakyat, they were, they were trying to discourage the rakyat. Now, if you have been to Baram, 
You look at it. If you come from Kuching, Bandar Kuching, or you come from Kuala Lumpur, ah, I'm sure what you see there, ayo, teruk lah. Kita tidak boleh avoid orang menerima berbagai-bagai maklumat, especially dengan adanya smartphone sekarang. Every day you buka benda-benda yang betul tak betul, yang positif negatif semua ada sana. That's why uh, we always advise our people to think twice. Whenever they receive information melalui ini, ataupun apa yang orang ungkapkan, think twice about it. The locals' resentment towards the Baram Dam project was so deep that it also reflected in the ballot box. Barisan National's rep for the parliamentary seat of Baram, Anyi Ngao, won by only a thin majority of 194 votes in the 13th general election, raising almost everybody's eyebrows. Just like the majority of the other inland Dayak constituencies, the Baram seat has always been one of the safe deposit seats of BN. In the last three elections, BN had been winning this seat without any contest up till 2013. Perhaps it was this strong opposition of the local people that prompted Sarawak Chief Minister Adnan Satem to announce a moratorium on August the 4th, 2015. Dalam pada kita mendengar uh, dem ini ditangguh, uh, kita memang ada rasa ringan sekiranya uh, kita ada masa untuk kerja buat lain. Uh, tetapi dalam pada itu pun kita masih juga berkumpul di bloket untuk melihat kepada isu-isu uh, semasa tentang barang dem ini. Uh, kerajaan Sarawak ni dia mungkin dia mau buat melemahkan kita, dia mau manjang-manjangkan hal ini. Sebab ini masa dekat undi, itulah dia dia henti dia sekejap. Itu dia bilang ditaguhkan. Selagi dia menang nanti, memang dia bu mau buat. Kalau dia sakap, dem baram dibatalkan. Baru baru sakap yang betul punya dengan buat ha, hitam putih dia. So, because of the election, maybe the government say that they put it on hold. And the final good news came when the Gazette for Ulubaram to be a dam site was revoked in February 2016. However, the anti-Baram activists still worry that the joy they have is only temporary and the revocation is not final. One day after the announcement of the revocation, Peter Kalang told the media that this could still be an election gimmick, as the Sarawak government still has the power to re-gazette. Hence, what they want is for the Sarawak government to publicly announce the cancellation of the Baram Dam project, or their fight will not stop. Sebab pada bila-bila masa, mungkin Sarawak energi ataupun kerjaan negeri Sarawak akan bina ini umpangan. Kalau kami percaya dam ini tidak diteruskan, kami mau terima surat hitam putih. Kalau masih orang mau buat ini umpangan, masih juga kami orang sini. Kalau ini orang bilang ini umpangan tidak dibuat lagi dengan buat uh, hitam putih. Okay, so say orang berhenti. What we want, we want it to be cancelled. Saya harap kawan-kawan saya di Baram dapat pertahanan dan hak kamu, harta kamu. Jangan biarkan kawasan kamu orang kena dem umpangan macam kami di Murung di sini. Sampai mati pun harus tahan kuasa supaya jangan macam kami di Murung.